she popped up on the top of my feed, and my jaw dropped to the floor. Once I started eating the meat, everything mm-hmm. changed. When I was 25, I was about 150 kilos, about 330 pounds. I was 50. I ballooned to over 770 pounds. I looked terrible. Um, I hated myself. Look, I tried everything else, and I had nothing to lose by giving this a go. I thought I need more help, so I reached out to Emily, who introduced me to Raymond, and that was the start of my new life. So I think a lot. I lost over four hundred pounds in four months. I was introduced to Lindy through the gang. She was one of our early members. She joined pretty early on, and she still is with us to this day. And she posted her progress pics in the gang. She popped up on the top of my feed. Full body chills, goosebumps. I had to take a. Do a double take and zoom in and look at the text. And I will put that post up on the screen right now in this video. You can see how she kind of labeled every photo with her、uh, weight, date as well, and you can just see how phenomenal her journey has been for her. But there's more, which we will uncover tonight. So. Real quick, Lindy, introduce yourself. Who are you? I'm Lindy. I was born in Melbourne, Australia.、Um, I'm 52 years old. I have two beautiful daughters, 32 and 20, and、um, a loving, supportive husband.、Um, look, as a child, I've always been very insecure and、um, painfully shy. I was always the one that was hiding in the background. My mother is from an Italian background. My father was English. And food was always very important. We lived with my grandparents, my Italian grandparents, and obviously Italian nonnas are the best cooks.、Um, always making beautiful sweets and treats and things.、Um, we're very emotional leaders. You you eat when you're celebrating. You eat when you're upset.、Um, It's always been a very important part of our lives.、So、I struggled with my weight pretty much all my life. When I was twenty five. I was about 150 kilos.、Um, I think it's about 330 pounds,、mm-hmm. and、um, I thought it, it's time to lose weight. I tried pretty much every diet you could think of. I tried the veganism, calorie restricting, Weight Watchers, Chris Powers' Biggest Loser diet.、Um, mm-hmm. Nothing worked. It was you'd lose a little bit of weight, but I was just yo-yoing. I'd put it all back on plus more. So I decided to have lap band surgery. And I lost a little bit of weight with that as well, but the emotional baggage, my mindset was not in it. So I, you, you just find the little tricks to be able to manipulate that lap band, and I still, you know, put it all back on. At December two thousand twenty-one, on、um, I was fifty, I ballooned to over seven hundred and seventy pounds, which is about three hundred and fifty kilos.、Um, I don't know what my my highest weight was because my scale just said E double R error, and、mm-hmm. it was like that for two years.、Um, so I have no idea what I, my starting weight was, but that's the weight I'm going by. Obviously, it was a lot more, but I couldn't tell you how much. My mum, she passed away when she was just before her fifty sixth birthday. She had cancer,、um, and I was at my, the same age as, as my mum when she was diagnosed at fifty, and I miss my mum like crazy. I wanted to be here for my girls. I didn't want my girls to lose me young. On my fiftieth, I thought that's it. I have to turn my life around, change, make a change. I discovered Dr. Ken Berry and the videos, and I tried to do this carnivore diet,、um, but I kept failing. I just couldn't stick to it. It was very difficult when. The people in your house don't follow it. Everyone's telling you you're crazy, <laughs> going to die of a heart attack, and all these things. But look, I tried everything else, and I had nothing to lose by giving this a go. I mean, it was either this or just keep doing what I'm doing. And I found Steak and Butter Girl. I loved your videos, Bella. It was so inspirational. <laughs> so I joined up in December two thousand and twenty, and yeah, I sat in the community meetings with my camera off. I was so nervous to turn the camera on. Everyone in the in the Zoom chats looked so beautiful to me, and I he was me this big blob, and I didn't even have a shape. It was just a blob. 
I looked terrible. Um, I hated myself and I just couldn't bring myself to turn the camera on. But nobody said anything. Everyone was so supportive. I listened to the coaches and their amazing guidance and support and the community and then all their stories were so inspiring and I, I just felt so at home even though I wasn't there I was in the background hiding where I normally normally hide it was just fantastic but I still struggled I just didn't know how to put it into my personal situation so January I thought I need more help so I reached out to Emily who introduced me to Raymond and that was on the 3rd of, uh, around the 3rd of January 2001. That was the start of my new life. They were fantastic. They sat with me, talked about all my issues. I had a lot of healing to do and a lot of mental <laughs> battles to conquer in my head, but they were able to customise the program to suit me. You know, no one else, it was my journey and to help me deal with everything that I was going through, to helping me deal with things that happened in my past and how to overcome those. And look, the rest is history. It's just been phenomenal. That <laughs> It's That's beautiful. It. Yeah, you're doing so great. And just so that our viewers get a chance to uh, get a feel for how the journey has gone, tell us some of the details. Like we remember drastic, drastic changes in your approach, your confidence and your results. You started at say, you know, 770, somewhere in that area. And just within the first few months, some big things started happening. Tell us, walk us through some of those. I was so inflamed. Um, I've got lymphedema. My body was just full of water. Um, you could just touch anywhere on my body and just leave dents, er dents everywhere. Mm. Um, so I think a lot, I lost over the 400 pounds in four months. What? And it's obviously not weight, it's water weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Wow, it's still amazing, body right? Throwing yeah. off water. And now my legs are like literally a third of the size, you know, even almost half the size probably. Wow. Um, my arms, I can actually see veins in my arms now. And my movement, like I had trouble with mobility. I've been housebound for many years as well. Um, I could walk around the house. Um, mm. It didn't hurt. I, I just... Getting from the couch, go to the toilet, every muscle, every bone, every joint, everything ached. Um, I just restricted my movement as much as I could because it was just too painful to walk. Right. Um, now I'm buzzing around the house and <laughs> wow. um, I've got my life back a lot. So that big drop, obviously things have slowed down way a lot now. Um, I'm now down to um, about 300 pounds. It's about 140 kilos. And I've still got a long way to go, but look, I'm not in any rush. It'll just, I love you know, that. All the weight will keep coming off <laughs> gradually. But it's feeling and everything else that I've actually got out of this journey that is so much more important my health and <laughs> my ability, getting my life back, aches and pains are going, um, depression gone. I'm just, um, talking to you guys on the, on the internet like me oh, yeah. I'm the one that hides behind the camera here I am sharing my story that's power of carnival got my confidence back so wow I've I have a couple questions real quick um I can tell you are just the most beautiful gentle soul I can just tell I can feel it through the screen and I have to say because I'm a musician and everything is very audible like I focus on the sound a lot when you talk I feel soothed. When you talk, I feel calm. And your voice is so nice to listen to. That's just a side comment. That's not a question. <laughs> but I love your voice, Lindy. My question is, first four months of your carnivore experience, you said you dropped how many pounds? Say that again. 400 pounds, 100 pounds a month. 400 pounds. How were those first four months of carnivore and seeing your body change that drastically? How was that like? Were you were you shocked? Were you accepting of it? Were you honestly not even believing your eyes? Like I want to know what went on during those four months. It's really difficult because um, my head is still at that seven uh -huh. pound stage, whereas my body 
is hasn't caught up yet it's it's really weird it's a weird feeling like um I still think of myself like that but then sometimes I'm feeling better um yeah it's hard to explain I don't know I think my my body's pretty it's damaged from all the the weight that I've been carrying so it has the pains have taken a long time to sort of improve now if I compare myself now to back then I definitely feel amazing um nice yeah it's just I, I have my life back as I said and Look, I never, ever want to go back to where I was. That's it. Yeah. Now, Lindy, I, I do want to ask, so your lap band, do, did it have to be removed or you still have it? I still have it. Oh. I did. It has been loosened because uh, I'd obviously I'd stretched the pouch at one stage um, and because I was losing weight at the time, um, just doing some bit of calorie restriction and I just lost my mum and so... I'd lost a little bit of weight then. They said, oh, look, we'll loosen the band and then come back in in a few months and we'll tighten it up again just so that the pouch could shrink a little bit down a little bit. Life happened, you know, we had to sell mum's house and family things and I never actually went back. So it's still in there, but it's not fully restricted. So I still do have some restriction if I try to eat a large meal. It hasn't affected my carnival journey at all, thankfully. <laughs> so, right. Don't and I remember sit. that's what we had to play with. We had to play with yeah. you getting more meals to prime. Yeah. Yeah. So I take a lot longer to eat my meals and that take right. me an hour because I just, I eat it's like a caveman. I just chop my meat up like a baby and I eat one piece at a time. And I have normally two meals a day, sometimes one, depending on how I feel. Yeah. That's what I wanted to hear about is your relationship with food. Mm -hmm. So right. when we started, we heard so much about the emotions and the family and everything that you felt with it. Are you, have you felt like, You've been missing out. Did you have you missed the food? Has it been a struggle? And where where did everything land for you with cravings? And how did that come about? Um, it, the start it was very difficult because, as I said, my family uh, weren't doing the carnivore with me, mm -hmm. so it was all on me. I'd be sitting there having my steak, and my husband would order Chinese, and having him sitting there, and I'm sort of feel, oh, I should be having that too. Not that I enjoyed it. I was mm -hmm. really enjoying my steak, but I guess just that sitting there together having the same thing and then I just felt a little bit, oh, this isn't kind of fair. That was a big step forward. Um, he's now mainly carnival most of the time, but he still likes to have his treats. And um, now, like, we'll go to a restaurant or somewhere that has carnival options and I always stick to the cleanest that I can. Recently I've been saying, oh, look, I might give my position, my permission to myself to have the dessert. And when it comes to dessert time, I'm like, I don't really think I want it. And then I don't order it. <laughs> and it. Hey. my husband and I go to, there's a nice little cafe close to home and I have a carnival platter. So you get a bit of pork belly, you get mm. rib, um, a wagyu steak and some a chicken kebab. And oh. we, it's a share plate for two. So we shared that, <laughs> um, which is lovely. And then he had his chocolate cake and his, Hope, which he loves and for dessert I'm like no I'm quite happy I actually I just I don't normally have coffee but I treated myself to a coffee just to finish I love it you, you're allowed to eat whatever you want to eat which mm -hmm. that's how it should be yeah. and you notice that when you eat the carnival foods you really don't want any of that anymore so that's awesome that 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 that's yeah. what you know we're we're enforcing you don't need to have it where it's like Oh, I have to avoid these foods at all costs, at all willpower. Mm. No, we just meet first. And I love yeah. that you have that mindset. It's great. I like to keep it strict. I find I did yes. try a little bit of keto and I found you can have everything, lasagna, keto, cheesecake, yeah. keto, everything. <laughs> and when it's keto, so you think, oh, well, I can have to double the portion because it's keto. So yes. it's be better for you. I found having those options I couldn't deal with that. It was too many the yep. macros, measuring food, having so many options would just do my head in. Carnival, I just, I have mainly beef. I love my steak. Um, yes. Sometimes I'll have, uh, I like the egg yolks and mm. Um, mm. I don't think that full eggs, in, you know, affect me at all, but I just choose, I hear that the white sometimes cause inflammation for people, so I choose not to have the whites. So I'll just have two raw egg yolks with my, and I use that as a mayonnaise, put salt on it, it goes oh, a little bit. I love it. Yeah. Um, 
tart, like almost like a mayonnaise, and I just stick my steak in it, and it's lovely. And I enjoy it. You just had a big meal. I was like, oh, what are you going to have for a snack now? Yeah, I don't have any of that now. That's all gone. Mm-hmm. I just I love eat your steak, yes. and then it's like your brain switches off, and you're thinking about other things. You're thinking about what are you going to do? What are, with all that time that you have? Yes. Um, <laughs> It's that food freedom, which I've heard said so many times. Right. I don't think about food for 23 hours of the day, 20, you know, 22 hours of the day. I'm living my life. I just don't think of it. I never thought I would have that food freedom that I have now. One common pitfall that I see a lot in the carnivore community and the steak and butter gang is electrolyte imbalance. I try to shed light as much as I can on this hurdle because it is just that common. Symptoms like fatigue, headache, inability to stay motivated in the gym, less energy, are all symptoms that are normal when we are adapting to this new diet and lifestyle. I see a lot of newbie carnivores salt their water, their beverages, and just salt generously on everything that they eat. For others, it's still not enough, and that's where electrolytes do come in handy. The brand that I recommend is this one called Element. It is spelled L-M-N-T. Highly recommend this box called Raw Unflavored. There's nothing but the three essential electrolytes that our body needs. Choose a beverage of your choice, rip a packet open, pour it in your beverage, mix it up, drink it down, you are good to go. If you'd all like a free sample pack with any purchase, and this does include the Raw Unflavored one, you can just go to the URL shown on the screen, drinklmnt.com slash S-B-G-A-L. I have also linked it down below in the description box. I love the steps that you went through um, when you first you joined the group. So first you came into a community and then you found you needed more support and more community, which was so amazing that we found each other through Bella, through each other, because we're kind of coming in that same, from that same spot. I mean, Raymond and I were both very overweight people, you were, you know, and just kind of we can remember what that has, what that was like, what that felt like to have certain looks, to feel invisible. So I wanted to hear just a little bit about what it was that made that big difference. And how do you think that made the difference for you? Look, the one-on-one coaching for me is what helped me stay accountable and mm. keep me on track. I couldn't do it on my own. I tried, but there were just too many issues going on in my head, the voices mm. in my head, the, the pull to just eat. The carbs and the sugars was just too strong. I didn't know how to handle that. I didn't know how to just eat meat and forget everything else. And um, I think obviously the priming that we did to start where you just nourish your body with the right foods and eventually the craving just started to disappear. And like while you're doing it, it's like, God, I don't want to eat anymore. You know, I've had (laughs) enough. Who says that when you're 770? <laughs> right. You, know, you don't want to eat. Like I feel, <laughs> I actually feel full. Um, so the priming was definitely a big step of just helping. Yeah, it's so big, but I was not nourished. I was just, yes. you are what you eat. And I was just full of rubbish, to be honest. I felt like rubbish. I, I looked like rubbish. Um, the hmm. stuff I was putting in my mouth was just garbage. It was terrible. Once I started eating the meat and just a couple of eggs and occasionally salmon, um, everything Mm -hmm. changed. You know, I just started feeling better. My mind started to feel better. How did you feel about uh, the fact that you didn't have to track or measure or any of that? That's what's made it so easy. My sister actually lost a lot of weight on keto and she introduced me to keto to start with. I did it for a little while. I was sending her photos of my meals to keep myself accountable and she was so supportive of it. But God, it's I struggled. My sister's very scientific. She she loves to do all that kind of stuff, tracking and all that. For me, I just found it too difficult. Like weighing your food and then I was like, oh, you look at a piece of steak and how I don't know what 80 80 20 looks like. I mean, <laughs> to me. No kidding. You know? And then right. I, I've got a little bit of OCD. Like I'd have to have exactly 20 and 80, you know. I, I can't do that. Like it was driving me nuts. Now I just don't bother. I just I throw a steak in the air fry. My, the air fry is the best invention. I love how you really emphasized how easy it is to integrate this lifestyle into anybody's life. I mean, if Lindy can feel food freedom and she cannot think about eating for 22 hours every single day and live her life like she said, 
I really do believe there is hope for everyone, everyone watching this video. So I've got a question. I want to hear the coach's perspective on this. What was it like coaching beautiful Lindy? Like in the beginning, how did she approach you? What did she say she needed help on? And how did it go from there? So uh, what, one of the things that really stood out to me um, from Lindy in her email was um, she was already had a lot of fierceness inside her, but it was a small fierceness. Huh. And so what I have seen and knowing her over this time is just watching that fierceness grow. Um, she had been, you know, given some terrible advice and feedback from uh, medical professionals, actually. And, you know, had been, you know, doors had kind of been closed on her this way and that way. And she knew that that was not accurate. And she knew that that there was a better way for her. Um, and so I think just her boldness and her bravery and just her confidence in reaching out, that's the step is reaching out. Yeah. Just, just getting enough to just, you know, put the white flag up and say, Hey, I think you can help me. And so just from that first um, contact, I felt that boldness. I definitely was, I was new to coaching. So I wanted Ray Raymond's help on this. And I'm so glad because we made such a perfect three person team. We just saw the best in her. That's what happens in the coaching room is you have all of these things that are happening in your head. And then you get in that room, you can show your fears and you can show your strengths. And that was what we got to see. And she was so simple and determined. She just really made a point of keeping things simple and doable. And then we would work to make it doable for her. It was absolutely incredible. And on my side of it, I remembered uh, Emily was like, this is a special circumstance. I can't do this by myself. I automatically lit it up because I was like, wow, if if carnivore can help Lindy out, this would be great to help a lot of people all over the world. I automatically saw how willing she was. And I was like, all right, you know, it's going to work. It's definitely going to work. I don't see why it wouldn't. She had this want. She really wanted to change, have the difference. So that's all I needed. It wasn't like, oh, it was just about weight loss. Mm -hmm. And that's not the thing I was even focused on. It's like, okay, you have all these other issues. That's what we're going to tackle first. I was like, let's get you properly fed. And then that's when we started doing the priming, which uh, she did excellent on that. We had to actually do a special circumstance because of her lab band. The more challenging part I remember with Lindy that we had was she wanted to hurry things up though. <laughs> oh. <laughs> she wanted to incorporate exercise early on and uh, felt like that would help her. And I told her, look, if you can just focus on the diet, that's where it's at, you know, but to her, what we were doing seemed very simple. She's mm -hmm. like, I don't see how this is going to do anything. She just kept on doing it. And it just kept on getting results, kept on getting results. We started seeing things getting better and we started seeing her character really change. I'm so proud of everything that Lindy has achieved. If you are intrigued or inspired by what she has been saying regarding her experience with the Steak and Butter Gang protocol, priming, feasting, and fasting, you also can try out the protocol that we teach. So many lives have been changed and improved. So many bodies have been transformed by this protocol alone. And the community, the Steak and Butter Gang, is so loving, so welcoming, non-judgmental, and ready to welcome you in if you need help. Every single month, we also have the honor to feature some of our favorite carnivore speakers, experts, and specialists. We get to feature Dr. Chafee, Dr. Tony Hampton, Dr. Sean O'Mara, Rebecca Heishman, and Sarah Franklin. You can join in on our challenges that happen every single month, anytime throughout any month, and you will immediately have access to all of our many Zoom calls and guest Q&As. Just go to the URL shown on the screen, sbgmeetup.com, or check out the links down below in the description box. Lindy, how did you figure out just how hungry and malnourished you were? Did it kind of show in a ravenous appetite when you first started carnivore? Yeah, I just wanted to eat all the time, obviously. Um, you have a meal and you're just constantly thinking, what's the next meal or when's it going to be? What are you going to have? When I started carnival, there was only one thing I was going to have, and that was the steak. But I did feel once I started, it took a couple of weeks to actually my, my appetite to sort of come down again. Yeah. Um, and obviously with the restriction, like, there was only so much I could eat at a time. So I'd have to, I'd eat until I, I couldn't eat anymore. But then, you know, I just sort of once 
that sort of die down, I would eat again. Um, but eventually my body just, I wasn't thinking of food as much anymore and I just gradually worked till about two to two meals a day, you know, through from three to two and um, it was just a natural occurrence. I didn't force anything. Yeah. It just happened. Beautiful. Um, and that's, that. that's the magic of it, I think, yeah. Mm-hmm. A huge milestone that I remember was when it was time for you to take a vacation. Uh, oh, do you yeah. want to kind of share about that experience and what were your fears kind of heading in and how that went? Yeah, my girlfriend invited me to um, on a cruise to New Zealand back in November last year. Mm-hmm. And um, that was my motivation. I had a few months. On. My motivation was to actually get up. Like I hadn't left the house for, for very, you know, much at all. Um, to be out in public with people, I was so nervous because I'm always the, you know, look at that fat lady or um, always the largest in the room. So I was always very self-conscious and it actually, this is what made me want to to go on this vacation with my girlfriend and just do something <laughs> really special. Um, so working towards that was a big goal of mine to be able to get on the ship, to walk around, do a little bit of travelling. It was just a dream come true. So, yeah, that did help um, keep me inspired and we had an amazing trip. <laughs> did you see a carnivore on the trip? I did. I think that wow. food-wise, they, thankfully they had a, um, in the cafeteria, they had lots of different little um, sort of restaurants and there was one there called the Fat Cow, which is on <laughs> Love it. How appropriate. Love it. So I, I spent most of my nights there. Occasionally we did eat at one of the nicer restaurants and I just ordered a steak and my girlfriend would eat the veggies like because she's not carnival or, you know, and Love she'd it. have the sweets and I'd just sip my water. Um, I did have, it was my 22nd wedding anniversary while we were over <laughs> there and they gave me a free glass of champagne and I thought, well, I'll have that. Um, and I said just the one. Um, champagne and I think we had one cocktail as well on the, the first day that we were on the ship she's like oh, you have to have a drink you know just to celebrate it and I'm like all right apart from that I was fully carnival um, and yeah I, I wasn't tempted at all every the other people that we traveled we traveled with her sister and um, nephew he was a vegan so you got a mm-hmm. carnivore and a vegan on the same table. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and, you know, he was tolerant of my food choices and I was as with him. And um, But we made it work and we had a really good time. Um, I didn't say anything about his diet. He didn't say anything about mine. We just accepted it and it was just lovely. So, wow. Yeah. I love it. it. To maintain. What are your daughters but- thinking about all of this? How, how, what are, how, yeah. how is this going for them? Oh, they love the new mum. They love the fact that we can. Oh. You know, it's very sad. They, I didn't know until recently, they actually talked about what would happen if I was to go. Um, and it broke my heart to hear that, that my, my youngest 20, she still lives with me, um, with us, and my oldest, she's living with her fiancé, but she, she was worried, what happens when mum goes? What do, where, what do I do? Um, and that just broke my heart to think that they were thinking that way, but they're not thinking that way anymore. Oh, that's um, great. We go out every month. We, we get our nails done together. It's our little girly trip. We actually go on Thursday oh and then gosh. we go out for lunch. Um, we're going to movies now. I've, I've been to the movies Lindy. twice. In the last month, I hadn't been for 25 years. And no problems getting in the chair? No problem. Oh, my Just God. Just walking from the car to the cinema and up the big hallway. I've never, I was able to do it. And I'm, we're going again with my husband this week. <laughs> Next week. You're like, getting out as much as you can. Get up. We love the movies now because of the big screen. And, right. and we don't eat, I don't order anything I just walk in no popcorn no drinks I don't want anything you see people coming with all these things and I'm like I'll have my steak when I go (laughs) yeah uh, I'm just not interested I don't want it the smell doesn't get to me I'm just I'm there for the movie and I'm loving the big screen and the noise and Mm. uh, just being in public now I'm not self-conscious anymore I can fit in the chairs um the restaurant we went to yesterday has these the bench seats where you have to slide in, and I'm like, mm. oh my god, 
I'm fit. Oh. I'm fit. <laughs> and so, you know, going to a public toilet, like fitting in the cubicles, I oh. don't have an issue now. Uh, but the little things that people take for granted, um, I had to think of these things. I had to research if you were to go out. You know, the stairs to get to the place, you know, am I going to fit in the chairs? Are the tables too close together? You know, what if I need to go to the loo? I want a table near the toilet. Now am I going to fit in the cubicle? All these things you have to think about, uh, which most people don't even have to worry about. Yeah. There's so many, you know, am I going to break the chair? Um, right. What an awful place to be. Tell us about your uh, your birthday present this year. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> I bought myself a car. Oh. I fit behind a steering wheel again. Yeah. Oh. And I'm now How long car. has it been since you've been behind a steering wheel from that time? I think my my last car eight years ago. We wow. were my, my car off the radiator blew up and flooded my engine and I never bought a car after that. Mm-hmm. Back then though, I had to actually recline the seat to get in. So my mm. seat fully reclined back because I couldn't fit behind the steering wheel. Um, so, yeah, and so even then I was too big for the car, but I was able to manage. But once I lost my wheels, I lost my freedom. I was stuck at home. Yep. Um, right. So I couldn't get out. Luckily I worked from home anyway. I, my job is mainly email-based and um, mm-hmm. so it didn't affect work. I've, been, I've worked full-time throughout all of this and, Thankfully, nobody knows what I look like behind a screen. <laughs> you just right. email out and everyone just, they wouldn't know what I'm, you know, what's going on on this side of the screen. So it's a really safe job for someone like me that can hide behind the computer. Mm. Um, but, yeah, having the car now, like I, I go out once a week at least. I, try, I have to take my car, oh, no. the car out. I love it. And yes. turn the radio up and just I go and visit my daughter when I can. And it's mm. about a five-minute drive and I, just up the freeway. So it's beautiful. I set the cruise on and I just feel like it oh, feels amazing to have that freedom again just to know that I've got a beautiful car. Like I just go in and open the garage door and I just look at my car sometimes. I'm like, that's my car. Mm-hmm. Oh. You sound like you just oh. got out of jail or something. It's amazing. Oh, my God. <laughs> anyway, Sorry, I should I say have. that. That was bad. In but yeah. in a way, it's a good analogy because um, just listening to Lindy talk about these simple pleasures in life, I mean, we are we are spoiled rotten, right? Yes. We get to enjoy all of this. And Lindy now has a new lease on life. Mm -hmm. She has flipped her life around. Mm -hmm. And you did that, Lindy. You are showing up today, sharing your story with the world, by the way, when I post this, with your camera on in less than three years. In less than three years. That is incredible. Incredible. Nobody could ever dream of this type of result, but you made it happen, Lindy. Of course, with the help of Emily and Raymond, and by the way, coaches, be prepared for your inbox to blow up after this video. <laughs> Asking possibly, for coaching. Possibly. Um, I am like Bella, the host right now is kicking in and, and and she wants to say, can we give a round of applause to Lindy and celebrate her? Like, gosh, everybody who's watching this video, I know that you're moved like me. There were moments that I was really trying to pent up my tears when I was uh, hearing you talk, Lindy, because I know what it's like to feel like your parent is about to go and you don't know what to do and you're freaking out and you're thinking of all of these scenarios and what is life going to be like without him or her. Mm -hmm. But you changed your life and health around for your family and for yourself. So I just want to applaud you and tell you that I love you and I respect you, Lindy. Wow. Mm-hmm. My girls are my big why. I don't want to leave them alone. They need me and I need them. So, um, yeah, mm. love my girls. Oh, that's great. I'm yeah. Moving back again. I have to be here for them. And I will now. Yeah, I will now. Thank yes. you. Raymond and Emily. I know that we can talk a little bit about um, health conditions that have resolved. Yes, yes. Um, and 
I, but just looking at you and when, how we talked about that you, when we met you, you were very malnourished and that that was, you know, such this strange thing that we can um, not understand that, that we can, our bodies can be in a different spot and just be not thriving. And mm-hmm. when I look at you now, you have healthy color in your skin mm-hmm. and your expressions and your muscles and your hair, you yeah. know, everything is just like looking so beautiful and thriving. Um, what were some of the the markers and the health concerns that were happening along that way? And how are those, where are those at right now? Gosh, I had migraines every other week. Um, they'd knock me out for days and I have had not one since being carnival. Not oh, wow. One. What? That, that's incredible. <sighs> Yeah. And the doctors would just say, oh, look, we'll give you a tablet. And I'm like, I don't want a tablet. I want to know why I'm getting these migraines and what I can stop to do. I, I'm very anti-medication. I don't like the doctors. I have them like a plague. I've, <laughs> we've had a lot of doctors with health issues with the family, and I guess it's turned me off because there's been so much malpractice with them that mm-hmm. I'm actually anti-doctors. Um, and then you just turn around and said, oh, go and have a massage. I'm like, it's not going to fix my migraine. So I, I battled with those for a long time and obviously something I was eating was triggering it and I don't know what, but obviously the carnival diet has fixed that. Um, mm. Depression, um, mm-hmm. I've got lymphedema and lipedema, which causes a lot of build-up in fluid in your body, a lot of pain. Mm-hmm. Fluid is is so much better now. I'm not as swollen and the pain in my legs is almost non-existent now. Um, it's definitely helped all of that. Um, gosh, I've got an um, underactive thyroid, hyperthyroidism. I'm on medication for that. Um, I don't know if that'll ever go away. It's something that my mum and my grandmother had. And that, um, so whether it's a hereditary thing for me, I don't know if it is or whether it is diet, I don't know. I was low vitamin D, low folate, um, which mm. I have supplements for to keep that up to date. Um, but if my la- latest blood results I got last week, everything was perfect. And my doctor actually said, well, unless you have a major diet change or any issues, I probably won't need to see you for another year. Well, oh, wow. to say that. It, was, um, it was nice. It's a new doctor. The last doctors I've had were terrible. Um one I went to initially when I first started um, this way of life, she wasn't very wrapped at the thought I was doing carnival. And mm-hmm. I said, look, let me do it for three months and I want you to keep an eye on my markers. And then if anything, after my three months or whatever, I'll come back in, have another blood test. If things are looking bad, then we can decide what to do. Mm-hmm. So just give me three months because I oh, I just want to give it a go. And she's like, all right, gave me the lecture about, you know, ghrelins and leptins and all these handouts. And I'm just like, yep, yeah. in the bin as I walked out the door because I just didn't didn't want to complicate it. All I wanted to do was eat meat and talk to my coaches, you know. And then I had um, Stephen as well who was part of the SVG gang. He's a um, blood botanist. Yes. Um, I had him look at my results, as my blood results as well because I sure. trusted my team more than my doctor. Um, so when I went back in, everything, all my blood results had improved. Mm-hmm. I'd lost at that stage around 300 pounds or 180 kilos, something around there. And she says, oh, I'm actually, oh, that's really good, but I'm leaving the practice. I'm going to go and work at a bariatric centre. And when you fail this diet, here's my card, come and see me. What? Wow. Wow. Um, like, I've just lost all this right. weight. Right. All my blood markers, are, she actually said they were looking really good. <laughs> and then when you fail, come and see me and have surgery. Yeah. Like, that put a little fire under me. I was mm-hmm. so angry and I'm just like, yes, there you go. You. I will come and visit you in a <laughs> two and I will show you that I've done this. Yeah. I love the attitude. I thought, how dare you say that? Like every other da- diet I have done, yes, I failed. This one, I, I've lasted the longest It's a, and I find it sustainable. Everything else I've tried wasn't sustainable and I don't want to have, I've already had the lap band, I don't want to have anything more severe where they're going to take more parts out of me. Um, 
you know, I don't want to, I just don't want to go down that path. Mm -hmm. And I don't need to. You don't need to. That's right. So at this point, you've lost, you know, minimum 480 pounds. We'll just say 500. How many people is that? (laughs) Right. How many people is that? 500 Uh, pounds. Right. Right. And you're, you know, feeling better, functioning, going places, doing things. When, When you look to the future, do you fear going back? What, how do you process that? How do you process from here moving forward? Yeah. I refuse to go back. Um, my way of coping is just to, I'm going to be sticking with this way of life mm. forever. Like I don't intend to change. Um, and I like to keep things straight. You know, when I'm, I, love it. Too. I just eat my meat and, and my eggs and a few other animal products or you know, chicken, beef. Mm-hmm. want to um you know i'll just keep st- sticking with this if i go out i may have a treat and i might i'll give my my permission to have a treat if it's a special occasion or whatever but yeah. then the last two times i've done that i've just decided no i don't really need it and right. i just you know that's fine if i do have a treat the next very next meal i'm straight back on the street and yes. that's how i maintain it. i just think once you start letting too many things in then that's going to start the cravings and, and go through that cycle. And I understand that. And I'm an addict. I know that and I accept that. And I think I'll, once an addict, always an addict. It's very hard to break that pattern. So mm-hmm. I need to keep quick for myself. So that's how I, I keep on track now. I just think, mm-hmm. of, you know, I know where I've come from. I know how I felt. Right. And I don't yeah. want to feel that way again. I don't want to be a prisoner in my own home again. Amazing. I've got too much to live for. I, I need to be here for my girls. So, yeah, they inspire me to keep going. And I'm not going back. No. There's no way. That's <laughs> one, awesome. one could argue, you know, Lindy says, I like to keep it strict. One could argue that's just simply keeping it simple. You know, for a lot of people, when they come to carnivore, they're like, oh, this is so strict, so restrictive, right? Mm hmm. <laughs> wait until you do it for at least 30 days and you start seeing the benefits roll in and you start feeling amazing like Lindy. That's when you start seeing a new life and a new way of living where you eat food, not for pleasure, but you eat food for fuel. So I love that you brought that home, Lindy. I'm going to wrap up this interview just because I know we'll do a part two. <laughs> yes, of course, we'd have to. Because I know everybody's going to want to keep up to date with Lindy. So, you know, for now, I would love to just request everyone who's watching this video, if you have questions for Lindy, words of anything for Lindy, drop it down below in the comments. And we will revisit with Lindy in part two. I want to tell you something, Lindy. This Mm -hmm. morning, I called up my mom. She lives in China. And she has been so against my carnivore diet lifestyle for the longest time. And she is also a quote unquote tiger mom. So very strict, very overbearing. And today she opened up her mind to the carnivore diet after I sent her your picture. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh. I sent her this morning because I was revving up for tonight's interview with you. And I sent it to her on WeChat. I was calling her live. So I got to hear her live reaction. She was like zooming in with her glasses. And she said, is that, does that say what it says? The number and the pounds. And Mm -hmm. I said, yes, Lindy just ate meat. She did not do any crazy workouts. She did not kill herself in the gym. She just ate meat and learned from my amazing coaches, Emily and Raymond. And she was, you're not going to believe this. She said, I'm going to do their program now. <gasps> Bella, oh, my mom, so the awesome. most stubborn, close minded person. person. Yes. <laughs> she wants to do the program because of you, Lindy. You That's inspired amazing. by yes. my best person. <laughs> yes. Oh, and it was many my more. Many more. Yes, many more. Lindy. So I thought that would make <laughs> your day. 
still yeah. love it. Yeah. Something that I have been implementing every single day is wearing blue blockers. I actually have three of these blue blockers. My third one is just a clear shade, but I wanted to showcase these colored ones because they do offer maximum protection. This is the highest protection you can possibly get, this red colored shade. And this yellow one is medium protection. Both of these and my third one is from Bond Charge. I love Bond Charge for their blue blockers because they have this style called Magnum that just works and sits so well for my face. You can adjust how the glasses sit on your face by adjusting the nose rest. It looks good. It matches anything you wear and it is comfortable and light. If you guys want to check out some blue blockers from Bond Charge, I'll make sure to link them down below in the description box. I'm I am excited. so I can't excited. Wait to see how that goes. That's going to be awesome. I love that. <laughs> I'm not surprised. I feel Lindy's story and we, we experienced the same thing at KetoCon. We, sh we showed your story up on our slide and everybody just burst out clapping and celebrating you, Lindy. They were so proud and so happy. And just to know that, you know, you're just like one of us, just a normal person. And you're just still willing to just be this loving presence, gentle, confident, telling people the truth and leading the way to the truth for them. And so I'm just so thankful that you reached out to me yeah. and that we got to get right. this together, that Bella introduced us and, you know, just so much good is coming from this. And just thank you for answering that call and for being true to yourself, because now many more lives are being changed because of that. Yes, absolutely. Thank you guys for just being there for me and being my rock. And you still are, even after all this time, you know, it's just so nice to have you guys to fall back on and, and even just to share my little NSVs and you're just so yes. excited about it. A lot of people just don't really care, like real my friends and family. I mean, half of them don't even say, oh, you've lost weight or you just, you know, and it's really disheartening. You sort of think you've been working this hard and you don't sort of, they just don't care. All they do is like, oh, you're going to have a heart attack. And like, how can you just eat meat? What about the veggies? You know, I couldn't eat that. And I'm like, you know. Well, we care greatly. We yeah. will over encompass that part. So, yes. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Amazing. Always share okay. your NSVs with up. us. Yes, we want to hear it. <laughs> yes. We want you can say it all day long. We're going to listen to it because we love it. So, thank you, Wendy. It. Yeah. All right. Well, that Thank was you for the community. It's just, yeah, I couldn't have done it with that. You've got your community. They're, they're Thank all, you so much. Everyone in the community so inspiring and the coaches. I just love you all. Thank you. Lindy started her own YouTube channel and she's already started sharing her story, posting videos. It's called Limitless Lindy. And I think we could all go show her some love and support by subscribing to her Limitless Lindy channel and commenting our amazing words of appreciation for her courage to share her story. If you are needing help, if you want to go through the same type of support and love and guidance that Lindy got, you can come join our community, meet Coach Raymond and Coach Emily and Lindy, since she is a member uh, and she joins a lot of our meetings still. You can meet all of us the entire team that I get to run this community with and all of the phenomenal members. It is a welcoming carnivore tribe. Just go to the URL shown on the screen if you want to read more details and you can just directly join and sign up. Thank you again so much for watching this video. You can connect with me on all platforms at Steak and Butter Gal and I wish you all a meaty rest of your day. I'll see you in my next video. SVG out.